morning, everybody, and welcome to Mastermind Mondays. My name is Coach Will Robbins, and I am here to help you to make more money for your company, help you get better results for your players, and ensure success at your facilities. So as always, I love starting my Monday thinking about how I can help all of you have more success in your business. And uh, I see coaches from all over the world, which is awesome. Andy, good to see you. Donna Pawlowski, good to see you back on. Ross, bunch of guys and gals on the call. So today we are going to dive into running profitable golf outings. And uh, this is something that I really think is one of the biggest and best things that you can do for your players. And I think it's missed out the absolute most. Uh, I think that we get so busy teaching lessons and so busy helping our players at the golf course that we forget the opportunities that lay outside of our golf course. So what I want to do today is make sure that every one of you has a pen and paper or an iPad so you can start taking notes because what I want to try and do today is, well, not try, I'm going to today help you to actually get an event up and running because it really isn't as hard as you make it out to be. I know how busy we've all been this year, but I want to show you how you can implement this and get the results that you're looking for. So for some of you who are new, uh, welcome to RGX, welcome to Mastermind Monday, and again, uh, be ready to make some things happen. So let's do this. We're going to start off with the chat box, and I'm going to start off with a question. So let's get a little bit of a feel of where you are all at right now. So what events have you put on for your students? So I'd love to get some insights, thoughts, and feedback on what you've done so far. So for some of you, maybe you've played in pro-ams. Um, I know Barbara Blanchard does a whole bunch of pro-ams and you know, they're all paid for, they're great events in amazing places. Uh, and I know that many of you have done those. Uh, some of you, you've gone out to a tour event, you know, you've got a local, maybe the US Amateurs close by, maybe you know, it's an LPGA tour event, you've been able to go out and take some of your students to those. Many of you golf trips, uh, hopefully some of you have thought about doing a golf trip or, you know, have gone to places like Scotland or Ireland or Bandon Dunes or Pinehurst uh, and, and gone on events with players. So as I'm filling this out, let's go ahead and get in the chat box, everybody. I know it's Monday, but uh, let's get active. Dave DePula, uh, thanks, none so far, but uh, many coming up, I'm sure. Um, I have not yet, but I want to. Uh, and then finally, I'm too busy to do events. So Andy Jinks, Pro-Ams, trips abroad, play with the pro in the club. Yeah, great. Come on, everybody. Let's all see. Justin, TJ, Ross, what you got going while, uh, while we're here? Pro-Ams, Ross Kukula, good stuff. All right. So, yeah, as we go through that, zero for Howard. Uh, TJ Marsh golf trip. So if you've done a golf trip, everybody, I want you to go ahead and just drop in there a golf trip that you've done or an asterisk next to one that you'd like to do. So if you if you haven't gone to Scotland yet or, or Ireland or wherever you might want to go, put an asterisk next to it. But for TJ, for Andrew, where have you guys gone abroad on golf trips? I'd love to see, um, see where those are. Vegas Pro-Am, awesome, Chad, love that. Let's see what else. Uh, Scottsdale, yeah, there you go, TJ. That's a really cool one to do. Yeah, Scottsdale's a fun place. Good restaurants, good time to go and hang out. So... As we go through this today, like I said, let's be prepared to make this happen. I'm going to start off with E here. I am too busy to do events, and I understand that, everybody. It is a crazy time for golf. But what I want to suggest to you today is start to realize that if I want to retain my players, if I want to grow a great culture, if I want a great experience of when I go to work, when I go to my, my, my so-called job, one of the best things you can start to do is start to understand the power of creating events for your players so that you're going to see all the benefits that come from it, including great cash flow, right? Which for all of us, I think we all say, if I could just work with more students that want to get better, who are committed, who fit in my culture. Now, whatever that culture is, that's what we're all looking for. Most people don't say to me, well, I only want to work with elite players. I want to work with elite players that want to get better. Even if they're not as good as some of the players, I'll work with them, but they just have to be committed. And what I found is that when you put on events for your players, you're going to see who really wants to get better, who really wants to get committed, who wants to be part of your culture by putting on these events and seeing who shows up. So with that said, 
Let's go ahead and uh, dive in here. Uh, Ross, I love that. I want to diversify and not be so reliant on my programs. Create lifelong students. Exactly. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So there are three key questions. And everybody, I want you writing these down. Because remember, if you listen, it's great. If you write it down, you're going to retain it. You're actually going to start doing it. Andy, Jinx, that's a novel right there. Spain, Portugal, Italy, Dubai, Abu Dhabi. Morocco, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, maybe one or two others would like to do the US and England, Lytham, Burkdale and these areas. Andy, you are the man. And if you come to the US, come and hang out with us for sure. Come over to California, Pebble Beach, Lake Tahoe, places like that. So let's ask these questions, okay? How do you plan to retain your best customers? Now understand right there that I'm not saying your best players, right? Because my best players aren't always my best customers, okay? But what are you going to do, right, to retain your best customers? Some of us might be buying more technology. That's great. Some of us might be getting certified in other teaching styles. That's really cool. But what are they looking for? Your best customers, the one that keeps showing up, the one that you love being around, what are they looking for? Okay. So as we do this, I want you to start writing this out. You can put it in the text box if you want. You can write it down on paper. But I want you to get very clear on this. What are you going to go ahead and put in there to make sure that your customers keep coming back? So yeah, looking for more fun, okay? For, for me, it's been, you know, they want connection. They're diehard golfers. They get who I am and what my coaching style is, but they don't have a ton of people that they know who are actually as committed as they are that want to play as much golf as they, they do and also have the same coach. So that for me is one of my biggest things is like, look, what am I going to plan to do? I start to understand that the resolution has to be inside of those three things of gaining community around players that are fully committed to getting better. All right. And ensuring that they have that same culture that I do, the same coach that, that they have. So the next thing I'm going to ask you, this is what are you doing to motivate your students to work on their game? So what are you doing to motivate your students to work on your game? Okay, on their game. Sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on somebody here. Let's see. Um, Ross, you know it's coming to you. I'm gonna throw it right at you. What What are some of the things that you are doing to motivate your students? How are you getting into practice? How are you getting to work on their games more so they get the results that you desire and they desire? Uh, super constant communication. Okay. Um, you know, all, all the programs are weekly oriented versus. Uh, pay for 10 lessons. Let's use them over the next year or two. It's um, very consistent communication um, through the coach now, communication. Uh, I mean, I, I don't go a week without talking to any of my 35 students. And so uh, that I do little things like in our newsletters, I'll put shout outs to particular students. And every time I put one out, that student goes on to shoot like their best round of their life the next week. They're so motivated. And um just the communication, you know, being, being like friends instead of student clientele relationship. I love it. Now, let me ask you this, Ross. If they knew that in six weeks or at the end of their 12 weeks, you were all going to Scottsdale to go and play an event together, or you were playing in a pro-am or whatever event you were going to have, and they had a deadline and a target moving towards that, how do you think that would ramp up the amount that they practice, the amount that they focus, and how committed they get to coming out to sessions? Yeah, so I, I did that with a scoring method group last semester. Um, I said, we had, there's a five sons event, so it was me plus the four, and we went and played at a pro-am at Portland Golf Club, and it was exactly like you said, it ramped it up. But then I had a bigger event at the end, the, the Callaway Invitational, and it was actually hosted at our home course. And so uh, the last four weeks of our scoring method program was really designed about how to play tournament golf for these guys because that's what they wanted to do. And Love it. Um, they went out and we all won money in the net divisions, me with them. So it, all of them were super motivated and it, it was a really good idea. And Love it. Absolutely love it. What a, I picked on exactly the right person today. I just had the right vibe there, right? And so I think one of the biggest things that we struggle with as coaches is getting our students to practice, getting them to actually compete, getting them out there to actually do what they said they were going to do. Yet we look at our juniors who are playing in high school or they're playing US kids or first tier, whatever events they're playing, and they're working hard because they know they have a tournament ahead of them. They know they have an event. 
And we know for all of us, if someone said to us, by the way, we've got you, um, you know, a, an invitation to go and play in the Barracuda that's coming up in Lake Tahoe here in a couple of weeks, okay? Hey, you get to play in that. We'd all be working on our game a heck of a lot harder, right? We'd all be going out there and maybe doing a little bit more stretching. Maybe we'd be going to the range a few more times, getting our game in shape. So one of the best things you can do is put it into a, a timeline where somebody can see that I'm prepping to go out there and play in this event or go on this golf trip. So they're getting ready for it. So it, it seems more like a block of time for them and, and a success at the end of it, rather than just a, you know, a lifelong journey. We want them to have these stepping stones in a lifelong journey with us, right? We don't want to just tell them, you're going to take lessons for us forever. It's going to be, hey, I can't wait to get up to Bandon Dunes. You know, it's going to be amazing. Let's get your game ready this fall so we're ready for December. And so it's going to get them continually working on their game, but with an outcome. So the next thing that I find is a question that we have to ask, right, is what are you doing to make sure that your coaching experience is standing out? Now, I think nowadays, you know, so many of us have got great technology, certifications, all these different tools that we have. But does it really affect the outcome of our student? Are they like really super excited that we have a piece of technology? No, they're not. What they're looking for are great experiences. Now, whether that's going and drinking wine in Napa Valley and playing golf there, or if that's going to Pinehurst and going to, or going and playing Pebble Beach, you know, these famous courses, people are looking for experiences. They're playing golf, right, to shoot a lower score, to have more fun. And as they get there, they start to realize, I want to do this on better golf courses, and I want to do it with my friends. And so what are you going to do to make that experience stand out for them? That it's not just I dropped 10 shots, which is amazing, guys and gals. I mean, if you can get 10 shots off in 10 weeks, phenomenal. That's what the scoring method is all about. But really, you know, Dave DePulo, you're talking about going up to Canada. Dave, talk a little bit about the trip up to Canada that you're hoping to run this summer. What, um, what What's the course? I've been, I think it's Calgary, you said. I'll see if I can unmute you. There you go. Oh, I muted you, Dave, as you unmuted yourself. Okay, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Silver Springs um, Country Club. It's in Calgary. My friend Santino, who's been, it was my student, one of my first students ever here in, uh, in the uh, desert. We're really good friends now. He said he's got about 10 people lined up. Love it. And, and so, like, what's the course like? The experience they're going to have? What do, you, what do you envision it to be? What, uh, how do you see it going, going on? I mean, an amazing golf course. What are they, what's the experience you're going to provide for them? Yeah, we're going to introduce the scoring method and get them, get them, uh, get them playing. Uh, how do I put it? And are they, are they going to be coming from the desert and going up to Calgary? Are they no, they're, they're, they're all, they're all most, pretty much are all members. They're all members of that course. They're all members. And, and like, so I've been working with Santino for, for what, for as long as, as long as I know. And like, we, we've been doing a scoring method. And he just shoots lower and lower, and they love it. And they say, we need some of that. So, again, uh, example is better than precept, right? So they see him scoring, and they want love some it. of it. Love it. And, that, and that's another huge one to do. I mean, you know, bringing in a guest pro. I know Sarah Dan uh, brought in – I mean, I went down there and did some stuff with Sarah, but she also brought in um, Dr. Rick Jensen for a day for all of her students, right? These are experiences that your members are going to get to have, even at your, even if it's at your own club, bringing somebody in. What an amazing opportunity for them to have. Even if it's, hey, we're bringing in PXG, you know, to come and do club fitting for you. I mean, the whole idea here is thinking outside the box and bringing experiences to help them to enjoy golf more, but more importantly, have community around an experience that's going to last forever. And so here's what I want to go through now is we're going to go through, like I said, have your pens ready because I'd love for you to all be able to try and do this as we go, right? We've got about 17 minutes, so we're going to knock this out, okay? So the first thing I want you to do is list out your best customer types, okay? So everybody write it out. Is it your elite juniors? Is it your beginner ladies? Is it your advanced adults? Is it your... Uh, this could be, you know, brand new junior golfers. It could be parents. I mean, it is what customer type, how would you define them? Uh, my middle-aged, middle handicap golfers. But what are the ones that you've kind of got a gut feeling of? I'd love to do something for these, for these customers. They're great customers. They're around all the time. And, and it doesn't matter. Like I said, today, I'm going to talk about my adults 
I'm going to talk about sort of my mid-range handicap from, let's say, you know, a seven handicap up to about a 20 handicap. That's who I'm going to talk about because that's the first real trips that I started to do. Okay. So I want you to write that out. Okay. Has everybody got that? You're welcome to put it in the chat box. I'd love to see it. it again, it's, it's your guys' work, right? What you can do. So if you could put it in the chat box and write out who it's going to be, that would help me too. So the next thing is, what would they be looking to experience? Okay, so let's just give an example here. If it was, let's say, you know, junior golfers, they're probably looking to experience a higher level of tournament, that next step up. Whereas if it's my mid handicap, you know, guys, they're looking to play top 100 golf courses. They want to go and play Pebble Beach. They want to go and play Doral. They want to go and play Pinehurst. They want that experience, right? If it was a group of, uh, let's say, beginner ladies, it's probably not likely that they're going to get to go away for three days if they're the parents of the children that I'm teaching as well. The experience they're looking for is community and connection, a great experience with their, with their girlfriends. And so what I want you to do is start to look at what is the experience that you're looking to provide. So for me, as I go through this, it was, look, I got a bunch of guys, Band and Dunes had opened up probably seven or eight years earlier. Uh, and we were sort of like, look, we've got to go on a golf trip. I would love to take you all to Scotland. I'd love to take you to Ireland, but it's a long way away. It's a lot of money, but we could go to Bandon. We could go up there and go and do Bandon Dunes. And so that was kind of my experience would be, what would they be looking for? Real Lynx golf. Like on the ground, I, I grew up, you know, I grew up playing golf in sort of the Monterey Bay area in college, you know, and so I knew that wasn't Lynx golf. I mean, it's by the ocean, but for my experiences, it wasn't what it's like in Scotland or Ireland. And so to me, it was like, I want them to experience the wind. I want them to experience, you know, having to play Lynx golf, but also have a group of guys up there playing golf, having a great time playing cards and just getting away from, from you know, the day-to-day -day stuff, okay? So... Next step up was, I want you to list out who are the players and the names and their contact information. So while we're doing it right now, list them out. So for me, it was Troy, it was Donovan, the first time I went out to Bandon, it was Eric, um, I'm trying to think who was Corey, one of my coaches. And I was just like, look, there's eight of us and let's do this. And we all got together and we just talked about what we're going to do and how we're going to make it happen. And it was literally listing out the exact player names that helped me because it was like in my head, you just as you've all experienced with coaching, right? So, yeah, I'm gonna invite, oh, I can't invite that person. And, you know, some of the reasons might be like they play way too slow. They wouldn't be a good fit in the group because my experience as a coach is I want this experience to really run well, right? I want everyone to have an amazing time. And so you're thinking of that person who, well, he's a, you know, he's a 30 handicap, band and dunes in the wind. It's going to be miserable. He'd be a great fit, but it'd be miserable. And I don't want him out there in the rain. I don't think his game's ready. So I really want you to go down the list and think about each of these people as you go through it. Okay. So, um, Bandon, Bandon bookings are like two years out right now. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, Ross, we're actually booked out through 2023. Jared does it. So it is pretty crazy. And the first time, guys, that we went up to Bandon Dunes and did this trip, the eight of us were the only people on property. It was the second week of December. We were the only people on property on the Monday night that we were there. And now it's not like that anymore. But again, you know, it's uh, it's it's a fun place to go. So what I would suggest now is list out five ideas for future golf outings. Like, what are the places that you could go? And I want you to think about it this way. Yes, we could go to Scotland and Ireland, but it might be a bit of a leap for your first event, right? What's close to you? It might be, you know, it might be a local golf course that just opened. It could be a course that just got redesigned. It could be a course within an hour of you. I'm not saying that you have to travel across the world to do this, but the idea is, is that let's list out five good ideas. So I'd love to see some up in the, in the box up here. Let's go ahead and put them in the chat box. What are the, some of the ones that you would like to do? And again, if there's a tour event close by, like I said, we've got the Barracuda coming up and several of our guys live on that golf course at Old Greenwood, right? So it's an easy event to go and do and hang out at their house and have a great time. We just went up there and did an event with eight of us uh, just, you know, just because we knew the tournament was coming. It was a blast. It was a really good day. So the next part here is what are the positives for each one? 
You know, why, why would you want to go to a tour event? I love going to practice rounds because I love showing my players what they do in a practice round and how they get prepared. That's an outstanding thing to do for my elite players and my high school kids and my top juniors because it's really going to help them. And I know the parents would see that as a great investment. So I know that trip would work. Going to a tour event for some high handicap golfers, some ladies who don't have too much time on their hand because their mum's probably not going to be very interesting for them. So I want to put out the positives for each of these so that when I do present them to my players, they have a good idea. OK, like a good reason for them doing this. OK, and I'm going to put it this way. Um, I'm looking at. Actually, Andy, I'm going to pick on you at the end here and you're going to run down your next trip. OK, and I might pick on Donald. I'll just keep him on. Uh, one one of you here will belfry that last and yeah that's right by where i live that's right down the road from us right there so yeah um so pick your top two i think one of the biggest things that we've got to do is before we go to some of our students and say i've got these 52 ideas have the one that you really want to do and have a backup plan okay what i'd love to do is have you go ahead and then once you've got this actually build out the experience. You're not going to do this for five or six. I'm going to go to, you know, Dubai and go and do this, but build out the experience. And this is, this is pretty simple to do. Okay. So how many people do you want to take? Okay. That's kind of the first thing. Do you want this to be a big trip? My first one, like I said, was eight of us, including me, right? How long was it? I thought we could get three days out of it. Okay. Three days. I knew, I know there was, there was kind of three and a half courses at that time with shorties, but I knew that we could get away with three days. It's now, we're now doing five days and we take up 16 players every year. So it's doubled in size and almost doubled in length, okay? But the idea is to start with, I knew that we wanted to go to Bandon because it was like a seven hour drive. I felt like we could get there, we could do it. When? Well, for us, it was like, I can't do it in the summer because I'm, I'm too busy. Um, and it's also really expensive to go to Bandon in the summer. And so we decided, what about, you know, right at the beginning, right after Thanksgiving, before Christmas, it's a quiet time of year for us. Um, and, you know, it would work well for our calendar. Plus, it was a great fit for our guys who are business owners who are like, look, it's the end of the year. It's a great way to sort of clear my head. And then how much? It was a simple phone call. Hey, how much is it? And then figured out as long as my costs got covered, as Corey's costs got covered, and we made some money doing it, it was like, let's just, you know, if we can go and play three days of golf and for free for me and my coach and make a little bit of money, that would be amazing. So it was really sort of like just mishmash put together. But those are the only questions you really need to ask, right? To at least get an outline to then go ahead and meet with your players and start to discuss with them, you know, what, what it would be like. The final thing that we did was we talked about what would be go the extra mile. And I'm going to show you some of those things here is like, what are the things that you could do at very little cost to make it go the extra mile? And then finally, meet with three pioneers, meet with your best customers, the ones that you know, you know, would be a good fit for this and share this idea with them. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm thinking about. I'd love you to be part of this. So this is um, this is Ban and Dunes right here. This is last year and a couple of years ago. So a few things that we did. One is we do a match play event. So we knew for our players, I, I can't do stroke play. I don't want to be out on the golf course for five hours. We want to do match play. We want to do team match play. And we also want to change every six holes. So it's awesome. So for the first six holes, I'm playing with player A, a and B. And then for the next six, it's player A and, a and C. And then the last six holes is player A and D. So everybody's competing against each other. Okay. We got the flags, as you saw, it says W World Golf on it, Band and Dunes, and everybody signs it. I mean, the flag costs like 40 bucks. Everybody signs it. And everybody that's won it, you can see Coach Jared was very, very bad this year and last year and won it as a coach. But it was an awesome, it's just an awesome experience because they love doing it. Everybody throws in 40 bucks. So we have a first, second, and third place. So there's a bit of money on the side. So it just makes it this amazing experience. And then every evening we come in and we have the leaderboards. And so we put the leaderboards in the restaurant and we're writing everybody's names up and the amount of banter that's going around the room with who beat who and how many, who shot what. It's just nonstop talking and every player we've ever taken up. And this is be our 11th year this year has said, best trip I've ever been on, absolutely amazing. Okay, the weather was horrendous for two days. It was nice for three days, but it was it was the best trip I've ever been on. I, I, I want to go back. And some guys come back every year. Other guys might come back, you know, every three or four years. But the experience has been is every one of those players that's been on band and when they see us talks about band and dunes are still in our program, still get coaching from us. 
And it's just an amazing experience. We got a seven hour drive on the way home and everyone is just having a great time talking about the success that we've had and what we've done and, and how it's all worked. So with that said, Andy, I want you to take us through, I'm gonna leave this on the list right here. So Andy, give us your next upcoming trip uh, and sort of give us what you've broken down here. So what, what's, the, what's the customer type that you're looking for? Well, actually the next trip I'm doing it's probably already sort of set because I've got a ladies group that I teach. Okay. And they asked, asked me if we can go to a different course to play. So I said, yes. And, and we've already sort of picked the course. So that will be that thing there. And that will be just a, a, a situation of getting them on the golf course and actually doing things like, you know, let them play best ball, let them play a bit of a scramble maybe, that sort of thing. Really? It's just a course not so far, about an hour's drive. That's Brilliant. actually what they want to do. Love and uh, And the one after that I don't actually know at the moment because obviously working in two clubs, I've got, different things coming up but um tell me a little bit more about that ladies group how many how many ladies are you going to take four four okay so I'll play, i mean probably what i'll do with them is i'll i'll, I'll do nine holes with two and nine holes with the other two that's okay. how i'll do because they want me to play obviously yeah but i'll let them do different things and you know probably just like okay you play against me your best score you know with your handicap that sort of thing yep. and uh yeah that, that's what, what i'll do with those. For that? what are you charging for that that's part of a group thing that I'm already doing. So it's part of the program. They just asked if we can go to a different course. So Fantastic. that's already you know, covered. It. And then and what then, are you going to do to add in there to make it go the extra mile? What would you say would be something that would just remind them of how, how great an experience it was and, hey, you've got to go and do this with Andy? Well, I don't think I'll need to for this group, to be quite honest, Will, because they, they just have fun every time we meet up. So, but what oh. I usually do is I just take like a few little prizes for them. And go, okay, you know, I'm going to sort of hide a few prizes. So, like, do nearest to the pin on the par threes. They don't know which hole it is and that sort of stuff. Nice. And uh, you know, the best score on the par fives, and you know, some hidden things just to make it a bit more fun. But what I did like, you're doing it already. You're, you're doing it already. I mean, you see, you're already going the extra mile. Those little things of yeah. what I love. What you're saying here, Andrew, is the experience, they're having this amazing experience. They've got this sort of very small, unique opportunity to be on the golf course with you. Have you thought of trying to bring eight ladies or 12? Or do you think, no, it's just a perfect fit? Because I know at Bandon, we don't want to get above 16. It's like, it's more than that. It would be too too overwhelming. What have you thought about? Should you increase the size of it? Do it more often? What are your thoughts? Well, actually, if, if I could do it, six is like the optimal group size for me for that particular sort of thing. And I'd like to have had six in the group as well. And I normally would have had, but two of them actually just can't do it for the work times this year. They just okay. can't fit in where the others would. Otherwise, would actually have had six this year, and that would have been perfect. But um, I mean, just give you an example of a couple of things I did in the one trip was brilliant. I did a trip down to Italy, mm -hmm. which is good because you can drive there from here. You know, I mean, it's about a five, six hour drive, but you can drive there. And that was just, um, we played golf for three days with training. And, uh, and it was a really, really good group. In fact, two of them I didn't even know before we went. And they like become friends of mine. Now they still come to have lessons, even though they live the other side of Munich, which is like quite a drive. And uh, and that was just a great trip. We just had a lot of fun with each other. And we just played one golf course. Yeah. So they got used to it. So they could yeah. answer as they went on, which was a good thing. And, uh, and I actually earned more money for that trip than I did for a trip that lasted a week, about three weeks later. And so how, much, really how much would you, because one of the questions from Ross right here is, so we'll ask you the question, how much money are you looking to make, uh, you know, as the pro, like what's, what are, what are you comfortable with feeling like, oh, that was a profitable, that was successful for me? Um, I, I normally look, if I, if I can get it, I want to have 500 a day out of it. So if it's a week trip, I want to get three grand. So okay. I think that's about a fair sort of price. And, it, and what we normally do, I, I've got a lady who organized the trips for me mostly and, and, I'll just say to this is the trip I want. Can you organise it? What would it cost? And this is what I want per head. Can we get up to that amount? And I mean, the one I, I did down Sweet Stock, I made like two grand for, you know, I was away for four days. So it was really, and, and you know, that was really easy. Brilliant. To be honest, I love it. That. I love it. I love it. Now, I think one of the key things to think about here, everybody, is this idea. I'm going to finish on this. And I got there's a couple of questions from Dave is, okay, my suggestions are this it's okay to start small. I know there are companies out there that can do all this stuff for us, but sometimes we build up such a trip in our head that we never actually get around to do it. If you are going to go to Scotland or Ireland or Europe or something, yes, I would definitely strongly suggest you having a trip, do it, not you. Bandon has their whole, you know, I mean, this is not a plug for Bandon, by the way, but I'm just saying, like, they do the whole thing for us. It's like, yeah, here it is. It's very, very simple. 
But I would say it's okay to start small. Like Andy said, I'm taking four ladies down to a course down the road and they're loving it, right? They're coming back as that lifetime customer. They want more. And after a year of doing this, they're going to be like, well, why don't we actually do a golf trip? Um, the next thing I would say, it's okay to make money doing what you love. I see so many pros who sort of like, well, you know, it just, I can't make money doing this. It's like, no, it is it is your job. It's just cool that we have a better job than most people. We get to go and get paid to play golf. So, you know, one of the questions here from Ross is, you know, like, what, what, what are you looking to make? Well, what's your hourly times that by how many hours you'd be out there coaching and times that by how many days you are. And that's pretty much what I would suggest. I don't think you should take a pay cut by providing a better experience. Now, if you end up having four people and you're like, wow, the price might be a little bit too high, then it's your choice to decide, well, should you invite six or eight? Or should you go ahead and decrease the trip? Or, But my thing is, is that if you're looking for those right people, they know what the cost is and the experience for them is, you know, going and getting to play Pebble Beach in hand, cutting it from four to three because you can't play fives on the pebble. Most people are very happy to pay the extra to have you there. Do you know what I'm saying? Because the experience of having a caddy is $200. So if each of them have a caddy, that's $600 to play 18 holes at Pebble Beach. Should I say, hey, well, it's going to be $1,000 for you to be part of it for the day. I don't see that being too far out because the experience is at that level. Whereas if I'm taking a group of high school kids or college kids to go and watch a tour event, I might charge $20 more, but we're going to take 20 kids, you know? So, Hey, we're, we're going out and you can make 400 bucks to go and walk around a golf course for the day. So it's really up to you, but please make sure that you value yourself and the opportunity you're providing. And it doesn't need to be perfect. This is the final thing that I would say is that so many of us try and get so specific and it's got to be perfect. Like I said, Band and Dunes, we drove up there the first night. We stayed in the worst hotel ever. We stopped halfway because we didn't want to go the whole way. It was the worst hotel ever. And it's a great story. And we got up there and we played and had a great time and learned so much from that first trip. You know, things like the one thing that I said was that, you know, the only way this could have been better would be my dad coming with me. And so here are some of the pictures of us at Band. And that's Gene, who many of you know at RGX is godfather to my kids. I'm godfather to his kids. He introduced me to my wife. That's my dad. The second year he's come back, he's come back every year. But last year with COVID, that's Brent, one of the guys, one of my dear friends who helped me start up RGX. Uh, that's Troy, one of the most, uh, uh, what should I say, loving but unstable people I know in the world, just like myself, who play college golf with me. And we have a blast every year that we go up. But I mean, it's the best experiences I've ever had and going on those trips to Band and on the trips to Pebble. You know, I took three guys down to Pebble Beach and had an amazing time with them two years ago. And so I would just challenge every one of you for, for that opportunity to, to look outside of what you're doing as this addition as an opportunity to grow. Um, Dave, quick question. Um, I know we're at the 9.30, but I see that you have a quick question. Um, what, uh, yeah. I'm going to start really small. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put like eight guys together. Do uh, I, have a, I have an inn in Bighorn and just do yeah. like just do a little day trip. I mean, everybody here and just get together. Then the next trip, better, better and better. So just start it off small. Exactly. And, and that's the way to do it. Start small, start easy. And for some of you, that might be, well, I've never even done a golf playing lesson. Okay, well, go ahead and get four of your private lessons and get them on the golf course and go and play nine holes at your own golf course. That could be it. We do pro-ams all year long with all of our students at local golf courses. You know, so that might be the next step for you. And as you get into this and you get more and more feedback and more and more people saying, I want more of this, then guess what? That's when you'd go ahead and start going for those bigger trips. So everybody, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to be here. For those of you who haven't started a journey yet and would like to know more about RGX, I'd love to hop on a phone call with you. You can go to rgxcoach.com backslash explore. You'll go on there, fill out some information about your background, what you're looking to accomplish, and then let's get on a call together. And for everybody else, I look forward to seeing you on calls this week with RGX, and I'll catch you all next week on Mastermind Monday. Thanks, everybody. Make it a good one.